And of Asha he said, Let Asha be blessed with children. Let him be acceptable to his brethren. And let him dip his foot in oil. Thy shoes shall be iron and brass. And as thy days, so shall thy strength be. There is none like unto the God of Jeshurun, who rideth upon the heaven in thy help, and in his excellency on the sky. The eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. And he shall thrust out the enemy from before thee, and shall say, Destroy them. Asher is the tenth son of Jacob from Zilpha. Zilpha is Leah's handmaid and the daughter of Rathias, a relative of Abraham. Zilpha was named after the city her father Rathias was captive in. Zilpha's sister is Bilhah. Both Zilpha and Bilhah are married to Jacob, the progenitor of the Israelite bloodline. Jacob established his bloodline with four women. All four women are Hebrews. When Asher was born, Leah said she was happy. Leah went on to say, the daughters will call me blessed, and she called Zilpha's second son, Asher. And Zilpha, Leah's maid, bare Jacob a second son. And Leah said, happy am I, for the daughters will call me blessed. And she called his name Asher. Asher became the progenitor of the tribe of Asher in the Israelite nation. The scriptures is silent about Asher and his tribe. The tribe of Asher is not one of the tribes the most high used significantly. Therefore, not much is said about Asher and his tribe. Asher and his children join a list of Israelite tribes that are overshadowed in the scriptures. Despite the role of the tribe of Asher, the most high used every tribe and every tribe have a purpose in our nation. The purpose of the 12 tribe series is to help Israelites all over the world identify the tribe they are from. There are many Israelites in the awakening that inquire about their tribe. Israelites, if you desire to know your tribe, you have to go to the Most High and ask Him to reveal your tribe. Once you ask the Most High, you must wait for the answer. While you wait, continue to serve the Most High in the spirit and in truth. The scripture says some have not because they ask not. Ye lust and have not, ye kill, and desire to have, and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Too many Israelites are asking the Most High questions and refusing to wait for the answer. The Most High work on His time, not yours. When a time comes for you to know the answer, the Most High will reveal it to you. A lot of Israelites must be patient with the Most High. I know we are living in the information age and the workers of iniquity made everything available at a click of a button. When it comes to the truth, the spirit of truth is sent by the most high to reveal truth and to prophesy about the things to come. If the spirit of truth is taking time to answer your prayers or to reveal truth to you, you need to examine yourself to see if there's any sin found in you. Some of you are grieving the Holy Spirit, making it difficult for the Spirit of the Most High to communicate with you. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Unbelief stands in the way of many Israelites. Majority of the time, the Most High answer your questions. However, most Israelites can't comprehend or they were not satisfied with the answer. Therefore, they dismiss the answer. Israelites, that is why you must examine yourself to see if iniquity is found in you. Sin separates you from the Most High. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. If iniquity is found in you, the Most High is not going to communicate with you until you repent. A lot of your actions hinder your prayers, causing the Most High to not hear your prayers. Israelites, everything always leads back to repentance. That is why I encourage all who come to this channel to make repentance a daily routine. If the spirit of hate, jealousy, envy, division, and many other unclean spirit have a stronghold on your life, these devils will hinder your prayers. The scriptures in the Bible said to the husbands, dwell with their wife according to knowledge and give honor to your wife so that their prayers may not be hindered. 
Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife, as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. In this generation, the prayers of many indigenous black people are being hindered because the spirit of division is running rampant in the black community. A lot of indigenous black people allow the spirit of division to hinder their prayers. You can't hate yourself and your people and expect your prayers to be heard by the Most High. Many of you have offended the Most High with your self-hatred and the hatred of your people. You are the image of the living creator. The Satans managed to get you to despise the image of the Most High. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. In an undisclosed book I've read, this book revealed that when Adam was created, the four holy angels that are in the presence of the Most High named Adam. The book of Enoch revealed the four holy angels that sits in the presence of the Most High. The first, your prince, the holy angel Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, and Phanuel. And on the four sides of the Lord of Spirits, I saw four presents, different from those that sleep not, and I learnt their names. For the angel that went with me made known to me their names and showed me all the hidden things. The holy angel Michael found the first letter to the name of the first man created when he went to the east and found a star and took the first letter of the name of the star. Gabriel went to the south of the earth and found the star and took the first letter of its name. Raphael went to the north and saw a western star and took the first letter of that star's name. Finally, Uriel went to the west and found a star and took the first letter of that star name. When you combine the four letters together, it formed Adam. When Adam was made and there was no name assigned to him yet, the Lord told the four angels to seek a name for him. Michael went out to the east and saw the eastern star named Ancolin and took its first letter from it. Gabriel went out to the south and saw the southern star named Desis and took its first letter from it. Raphael went out to the north and saw the northern star named Arthos and took its first letter from it. Uriel went out to the west and saw the western star and named Mensabrium and took its first letter from it. When the letters were brought together, the Lord said to Uriel, read these letters. He read them and said, Adam. Once Adam was created, your prince, the holy angel Michael, commanded the angels to worship the image of the Most High. The Most High command that the angels do so. Your adversary, Satanel, in some scriptures is called Lucifer or Satan, refused to worship the image of the Most High, that is Adam. The angels that was beneath him refused to worship as well. The infamous scripture in the Bible that said, I will place my throne above the stars of God and be like the Most High. Satanel said this to Michael if the Most High becomes angry with him for not worshiping Adam. He would place his throne above the stars. Satanel's failure to worship the image of the Most High is one of the reasons Satanel and his angels were kicked out of the heavens. Michael went out and called all the angels saying, Worship the image of God as the Lord God has commanded. Michael himself worshipped first. Then he called me and said, Worship the image of the Lord God. I answered, I do not need to worship Adam. Since Michael kept urging me to worship, I told him, Why do you urge me? I will not worship an inferior and younger being. I am his senior in creation. Before he was made, I already existed. It is his duty to worship me. When the angels who were under me heard this, they refused to worship him. And Michael said, worship the image of God, because if you will not worship him, the Lord God will be angry with you. I said, if he is angry with me, I will set my throne above the stars of heaven and will be like the highest. Israelites, when you despise yourself, you're despising the most high. Israelites and indigenous black people, the Satans hate you and wage war with you because Satan felt that Adam was inferior to him. Satan felt he was created first. He shouldn't have to bow down to worship Adam who was created after him. Because of his refusal, he lost his place in the heavens. Today, he waged war with you. Today, he has caused you to hate yourself, the image of the most high. 
Satanel and the other species of mankind share the same belief. How many times have they referred to you as an inferior people? Yet many of you believe these hybrids are your brothers and sisters. Israelites, do not let the spirit of division cause your prayers to be hindered. If you're not getting the result that you want from the Most High, examine yourself to see if there's any offense found in you. When Jacob gathered his sons to him to bless them and to prophesy to them, when it came to Asher, Jacob said, Out of Asher his bread shall be fat, and he shall yield royal dainties. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together, that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Gather yourselves together, and hear, ye sons of Jacob, and hearken unto Israel your father. Out of Asher his bread shall be fat, and he shall yield royal dainties. Like I stated previously, the scriptures do not give us a lot of information about Asher and his tribe. Asher's land inheritance was fit for oil and wheat. Therefore, Jacob blessed him according to what his inheritance would be in the latter days. Bread and oil comes from the tribe of Asher. The tribe of Asher land inheritance yielded him great riches. And the fifth lot came out for the tribe of the children of Asher according to their families. And their border was Helkath and Halai and Beten and Akshaf and Alamelech and Ahmad and Mishael and reacheth to Carmel westward and to Shihor Libnath and turneth toward the sun rising to Beth Dagon, and reacheth to Zebulun, and to the valley of Jephthiel, toward the north side of Beth Amech, and Neiel, and goeth out to Kabul on the left hand, and Hebron, and Rehob, and Hamon, and Cana, even unto great Zidon. And then the coast turneth to Ramah, and to the strong city Tyre, and the coast turneth to Hosa, and the outgoings thereof are at the sea from the coast to Akzib. Uma also in Afek and Rehob, twenty and two cities with their villages. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Asher according to their families, these cities with their villages. The provision that came from the land of Asher was fit for kings and queens. Jacob said out of Asher his bread or food would be rich and the food is fit for royalty. Leah said when Asher was born that she was happy and that the daughters would say she is blessed. The children of Asher are a happy people. The name Asher means happy. If you're a happy person at heart, the tribe of Asher may be your tribe. When the children of Asher settled in their land, they were pleased and happy with their land inheritance. Their land was very fertile. The children of Asher provided high quality food for their people and the surrounding nations. The tribe of Asher, along with the tribe of Reuben, Gad, Zebulon, Dan, and Naphtali were chosen to pronounce the curses on Mount Ebal. And these shall stand upon Mount Ebal to curse Reuben, Gad, and Asher, and Zebulun, Dan, and Naphtali. The curses these tribes were selected to pronounce were on the people and tribes that created graven images in the list of other offenses found in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 27 before the Israelites inherited their land. Curse be he that confirmeth not all the words of this law to do them, and all the people shall say, Amen. The children of Asher are among the tribes that failed to remove the Canaanites from their land. The children of Asher lived with the Canaanites when they possessed their land. Neither did Asher drive out the inhabitants of Akko, nor the inhabitants of Zidon, nor of Alab, nor of Adzib, nor of Helba, nor of Afik, nor of Reob. But the Asherites dwelt among the Canaanites, the inhabitants of the land, but they did not drive them out. Most of the tribes we've discussed in the 12 tribe series were strong and engaged in war. Majority of the sons of Jacob could destroy wild beasts with their bare hands. Most of the men of war in our nation were not afraid to war against the enemy. During the times of the judges, a time when the Israelites did what was proper in their sight, at that time, our people had no king. The Most High raised judges to lead in the battle against the enemy. When Deborah was the judge, the tribe of Asher did not participate in the battles. In the songs of Deborah, she revealed that Dan remained in ships and Asher continued on the shores. The tribe of Asher did not help. 
Gilead abode beyond Jordan. And why did Dan remain in ships? Asher continued on the seashore and abode in his breaches. Curse ye Maros, said the angel of the Lord. Curse ye bitterly the inhabitants thereof, because they came not to the help of the Lord, to the help of the Lord against the mighty. The tribe of Asher is a part of the northern kingdom of Israel. Gad and Asher are full brothers, for their mother is Zilpha. The testament of Asher talks a lot about dual personality. When Asher was 125 years old, he gathered his children to him and revealed to his children about the Most High and their future in the latter days. The copy of the testament to Asher, what things he spake to his sons in the 125th year of his life. For while he was still in health, he said to them, Hearken, ye children of Asher, to your father, and I will declare to you all that is upright in the sight of the Lord. In the testament of Asher, Asher revealed that the Most High gave the sons of men two inclination, two kinds of action, and two modes of actions. Two ways has God given to the sons of men, and two inclinations, and two kinds of actions, and two modes of action, and two issues. Therefore all things are by twos, one over against the other. In the testament of Asher, Asher revealed that there are two ways, good and evil. Good and evil are the two inclination. Good inclinations lead to righteousness. For there are two ways of good and evil, and with these are the two inclinations in our breasts, discriminating them. Therefore, if the soul take pleasure in the good inclination, all its actions are in righteousness, and if it sin, it straightway repent it. For having its thoughts set upon righteousness and casting away wickedness, it straightway overthroweth the evil and uprooteth the sin. The second inclination is evil. With evil, all of its actions are wickedness. Wickedness is ruled by Belial or the Satans. But if it incline to the evil inclination, all its actions are in wickedness, and it driveth away the good and cleaveth to the evil and is ruled by Belial. Even though it work what is good, he perceive it to evil. For whenever it beginneth to do good, he forceth the issue of the action into evil for him, seeing that the treasure of the inclination is filled with an evil spirit. In the testament of Asher, Asher said to his children not to become two-faced. Asher commanded his children to cleave to goodness. Asher revealed that they that are two-faced don't serve the Most High. They serve their own lust that will please the Satans and the other people who are two-faced. But do not ye, my children, wear two faces like unto them, of goodness and of wickedness, but cleave unto goodness only. For God hath his habitation therein, and men desire it. But from wickedness flee away, destroying the evil inclination by your good works. For they that are double-faced serve not God, but their own lusts, so that they may please Belial and men like unto themselves." Being two-faced and double-minded are similar. The scriptures in the Bible talk about being double-minded. The scripture said a person who is double-minded is tossed around. The scripture says such a person is unstable in everything that they do. The Most High expressed that he disliked a double-minded person. The Most High preferred that his people is either hot or cold. Anyone that is lukewarm, the Most High will reject. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. The children of Asher would struggle with being two-faced. Being two-faced, they showed up in the tribe of Asher when they did not help their people in battle when Deborah was the judge. The tribe of Asher's failure to help their people against the Canaanite king made them appear to be weak. In addition, it showed their lack of faith in the Most High. Later on in the scriptures, the tribe of Asher did give support to Gideon, who called on them to fight against the Amalekites, the Midianites, and other armies that came against them from the east. And he sent messengers throughout all Manasseh, who also was gathered after him. And he sent messengers unto Asher, 
and unto Zebulun, and unto Naphtali, and they came up to meet them. If you're a person that struggle with dual personality, the tribe of Asher may be your tribe. In the Testament of Asher, Asher said to his children, there are two in all things, one against the other. Asher said one is hidden by the other. Ye see, my children, how that there are two in all things, one against the other, and the one is hidden by the other. In wealth is hidden covetousness, in conviviality, drunkenness, in laughter, grief, in wedlock, profligacy. King Solomon had the same revelation about two inclinations. King Solomon said, in everything there is a season. Asher revealed that death succeeds life. Asher gave many other examples of the two-faced and dual personality he spoke to his children about. Death succeedeth to life, dishonor to glory, night to day, and darkness to light, and all things are under the day, just things under life, unjust things under death, wherefore also eternal life awaiteth death. In the Testament of Asher, Asher revealed to his children that he did not wonder from the truth. He searched all the commandments of the Most High and walked according to one face and not two faiths. Asher commanded his children to walk in a single face. All these things, therefore, I proved in my life, and I wandered not from the truth of the Lord, and I searched out the commandments of the Most High, walking according to all my strength with singleness of face unto that which is good. Take heed, therefore, ye also, my children, to the commandments of the Lord, following the truth with singleness of face. Asher said to his children that the people who are two-faced are guilty in double fold. Two-faced people do what is evil and take pleasure in it. Asher command his children to keep the statutes, commandments, and laws of the Most High. For they that are double-faced are guilty of a twofold sin. For they both do the evil things and they have pleasure in them that do it, following the example of the spirits of deceit and striving against mankind. Do ye, therefore, my children, keep the law of the Lord, and give not heed unto evil as unto good. But look unto the things that is really good, and keep it in all commandments of the Lord, having your conversation therein, and resting therein. In the Testament of Asher, Asher said to his children, For the end of men show in their righteousness or unrighteousness, when they meet the angels of the Most High and of Satan. For the latter ends of men do show their righteousness or unrighteousness when they meet the angels of the Lord and of Satan. Asher went on to say that when the soul depart from trouble, it is tormented by evil spirits, which leads to lust. Asher revealed if the person is peaceful and maintain their deliverance, that person will meet the angel of peace. Many of you know the Prince of Peace as the Messiah. The angel of peace will lead the person to eternal life. For when the soul departs troubled, it is tormented by evil spirit, which also is served in lust and evil works. But if he is peaceful with joy, he meeteth the angel of peace, and he leadeth him into eternal life. Like his brothers, whose testaments we've read, Asher referred to the Messiah as an angel of peace. In the scriptures you just heard said the angel of peace will lead him into eternal life. I hope it's coming together for you concerning the one that is coming out of Judah and Levi that all the patriarchs spoke to their children about. Israelites, take heed to your father's words and not roam. Asher warned his children about sodomy. Become not my children as Sodom, which sinned against the angels of the Lord and perished forever. In the Testament of Asher, Asher said to his children that in the latter days, they will sin and be delivered into the hands of their enemies. Asher said their land will remain desolate, the holy places destroyed, and his children will be scattered to the four corners of the earth. For I know that ye shall sin and be delivered into the hands of your enemies, and your land shall be made desolate, and your holy places destroyed, and ye shall be scattered unto the four corners of the earth. The scriptures in the Bible made it appear as if the southern kingdom of Judah, which consists of Judah, Benjamin, and a remnant of Levi, were the only tribes scattered to the four corners of this world. Majority of the tribes are scattered. 
If they are not in their land, then they are scattered. The tribe of Asher is one of the tribes that was scattered to the four corners of this world. Asher went on to say that his tribe will vanish away like water. And ye shall be said at naught in the dispersion vanishing away as water. A lot of Israelites in the awakening believed that the tribe that vanished was the Danites. Yet Asher revealed that his tribe vanished like water. Israelites, this is why you need discernment for popular doctrines. There are many people who say certain tribes have kept their oral traditions. Some people proclaim these tribes know from whom they descend from. This may be true. However, Asher revealed to his children that they will be dispersed and when they are dispersed, they will vanish away like water. When water evaporates, it becomes a molecule that stays in the air. Asher said in his testament that he tell his children these things so they will not disobey. Asher went on to say that he knows that his tribe will disobey and become ungodly. Therefore, do ye also, my children, tell these things to your children, that they disobey him not. For I have known that ye shall assuredly be disobedient, and assuredly act ungodly, not giving heed to the law of God, but to the commandments of men, being corrupted through wickedness. In the testament of Asher, Asher said to his children, Due to their disobedience, they will be scattered like his brothers, Gad and Dan. Not only did Asher said his tribe will be scattered, Asher said they will not remember their land, tribe, and tongue. And therefore shall ye be scattered as Gad and Dan, my brethren, and ye shall know not your lands, tribe, and tongue. Last week, we reviewed the testament of Gad. Gad did not disclose the whereabout of his tribe in the latter days. Asher, Gad's full brother, they share the same mother, Zilpha, revealed that Gad and Dan were scattered. We've read the testament of Dan, and Dan confirmed that his tribe was scattered and the Danites remained close to Levi. Asher revealed that all three tribes, Dan, Gad, and Asher, will be scattered. Also, they will forget their land, tribe, and language. There were many speculation about who the tribe of Gad was. And I believe that the tribe of Gad was in Africa. Of course, there is a remnant of all the tribes in Africa, and there are a remnant of the tribes in the diaspora. If you're a Danite, a Gadite, and the children of Asher, Asher reveal you will forget your tribe, language, and land. Asher went on to say to his children, they will vanish. Locating the tribe of Asher will be difficult. The Most High know where his people are. If you believe you descend from the tribe of Asher or any one of the tribes, the Most High can reveal this information to you. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his, and let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. In the awakening, the disciples of Satan has pushed a lot of doctrines that are contrary to the word of the Most High. Israelites, that is why you need discernment. When you listen to doctrines that grieve the spirit of the Most High in you, you have to learn how to discern such messages. The 12 tribe chart does not align with the word of the Most High. The Israelites who push the chart are misleading the people of the Most High. The tares that they claim to be Israelites from the Northern Kingdom are not the people of the Most High. If the non-Israelites cleave to the Israelites and serve the Most High, then they can inherit the kingdom and obtain salvation. The prince that is over our people is not just for us, but he is over all the righteous. That is why he is the deliverer. Michael, one of the holy angels, to wit he that is set over the best part of mankind and over chaos. Our fathers always said the salvation that will come from Judah and Levi will save the Gentiles and the Israelites. You don't have to be an Israelite to obtain salvation. There is no need for those who are not of the Israelite bloodline to fight against the natural branches. If you're truly serving the Most High in the spirit and in truth, you will obtain salvation. Remember, the Most High made a covenant with Adam and the righteous seed of Adam. The Most High granted Adam and his seed salvation. All indigenous black people are from the seed of Adam. If you're from the seed of Adam, salvation was promised to you. Don't let Rome's misinterpretation of the scriptures cause strife between the people of the Most High and the Gentiles. 
Remember, the seed of the fallen manipulated the scriptures and inserted themselves into the scriptures and laid open the book of the law, wherein the heathen has sought to paint the likeness of their images. The word of the Most High said the tares and the wicked will not inherit eternal life. The word of the Most High said this, not people whom you claim to be racist and spreading hate speech. The Most High has vessels made for honor and some for dishonor. Judas Iscariot was a vessel made for dishonor. Everyone has a role to play. Not everyone is a part of the righteous. Narrow is the road that leads to life. The scripture said a few will find that road. Just because the everlasting covenant was transferred to the Israelites, it doesn't exclude non-Israelites. Too many non-Israelites covet the Israelite bloodline. You don't have to become an Israelite or infiltrate the Israelite bloodline to inherit the kingdom. Remember Rahab the harlot that hide the spies? The Most High bless her and save her life for her faith. By faith the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace. The promises made to the Israelites who returned to serve the Most High in the spirit and in truth is amazing. A lot is required of the Israelites. A lot of people who covet the Israelite bloodline are not truly serving the Most High for the right reason. If you were, you wouldn't covet the chosen bloodline, nor would you cause the people of the Most High to stumble through your desires to infiltrate the Israelite bloodline by marriage. You are causing the daughters of Zion and the sons of Israel to sin when they marry you. A righteous person wouldn't do that. Don't let Satan deceive you. I know many are deceived through the false charts. Some Israelites are including people who are not their people, deceiving them in the process. To the non-Israelites and the strangers, do as the scriptures say, cleave to the Israelites and serve the Most High in the spirit and in truth. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the stranger shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were. And they shall rule over their oppressors. In the testament of Asher, Asher said to his children that the Most High would gather his people through mercy and for the sake of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But the Lord will gather you together in faith through his tender mercy and for the sake of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Asher commanded his children to bury him in Hebron next to his fathers. After he commanded his children, he transitioned to the afterlife. Israelites, take heed to the testaments of your fathers. Listen to them and return to serve the Most High in the spirit and in truth. Do not follow doctrines and people that will cause you to stumble. Remember, you must work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Israelites, listen to the anointed teachers and prophets the Most High lead you to. Do not scout the internet for people to follow. If the Most High draw you to him, he will send you where he wants you to go to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. The awakening is a personal relationship that is rooted in repentance. Don't lose sight of that. Your Savior is the Most High, not the people the Most High anointed to bring forth his words. Israelites, the time has come for you to forsake your dependency on the beast culture and the beast religion and become dependent on the Most High. Serve him in the spirit and in truth, just like he command. Watch and see if he will not transform you by renewing your mind. Israelites, give the Most High the freedom to set you free. Our soul waiteth for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our hearts shall rejoice in him because we have trusted in his holy name. Let thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us according as we hope in thee.